Shua Tov, folks. Welcome to week number 78 in our Till of Sales WhatsApp Saturday Night story, Stories group. <clears throat> uh, this is a f- famous incident that happened in, in Eretz Israel uh, in, uh, well, more than 40 years ago already, 40, 45 years ago. Uh, I heard it from uh, Mrs. Nakshon herself. Uh, Bork Nachshon, a famous Hasidic artist, and his wife Sarah, a modern-day heroine of the Jewish people, were among the first Jews to return to Hebron. In, in 1975, following the establishment of Kiryat Arba on a hilltop above the old city of Hebron, the Nachshon celebrated the birth of a son. They decided to perform the circumcision inside the cave of the Machpelah in Hebron, the burial place of Avram and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob and Leah, and according to tradition, Adam and Eve. The baby was named Avraham Yedidya. Three months later, a tragedy. Sarah found Avraham Yedidya dead in his crib. The young mother was beside herself. Why should her new son, brought into the covenant of Abraham in Hebron, in the most ancient city of the Jewish people, in the land of Israel, be taken from her after only three months? Everything in this world has a purpose. What was the purpose of her three-month-old son? Sarah decided that Avraham Yedidya, we now have Sarah and Avraham, Sarah decided that Avraham, and, uh, that Avraham Yedidya would be buried in the ancient Jewish cemetery in Hebron. The cemetery had last been used to enter the, the 67 Jews slaughtered in the 1929 riots in Hebron. Uh, a, a, a major percentage of them were, were from the Lubavitch community in Hebron then. It is, eight, it is minutes from the traditional graves of Ruth and Jesse, Yishai, and overlooks the cave of Machpelah. Perhaps, Sarah thought, this was the purpose of the baby, to take part in a sad but vital part of renewing Jewish Hebron. After almost 50 years of Arab opposition, the Jewish cemetery of Hebron would again be utilized as a Jew's last resting place. The funeral procession left Kiryat Arba in the late afternoon for the ancient Jewish cemetery in Hebron. Suddenly the mourners encountered soldiers and roadblocks. The cards came to a halt. Soldiers began scouring the site, opening car doors, searching for something. No, you may not proceed to the cemetery, the soldiers ordered the mourners. The cemetery is off limits. Uh, one of the car doors opened. A woman stepped out with a bundle in her arms. She addressed the soldiers. Are you looking for me? Are you looking for my baby? My name is Sarah Nakshon. Here is my baby in my arms. If you won't let us drive to the cemetery, we will walk. Men with shovels and flashlights and many women walked through ancient Hebron as night falls. They passed the cave of Machpelah. They passed the 450-year-old Avram Avinu synagogue, left in ruins destroyed by the Jordanian conquerors in 1948. They walked through the Arab streets. Blockades set up to stop the crowd are pushed aside. Senior officers give orders over their walkie-talkies. Stop them. Don't let them proceed. But the soldiers, overcome by the scene, radio back. We can't stop them. If you want to stop them, come down here and do it yourselves. The procession continues past Beit Ronenu, past Beit Schneerson, home of Menucha Rachel Schneerson Sloman, granddaughter of the Balatanya, up the steep hill to the ancient cemetery. Moonlight illuminates the field. Sarah <coughs> Nakshin releases the body of her tiny son, Avram Yadidya, and it is lowered into the freshly dug grave. The plot is only meters from the mass grave of 1929. Mustering her voice, Sarah utters, 4,000 years ago, our patriarch Abraham purchased Hebron for the Jewish people by burying his wife Sarah here. Tonight, Sarah is repurchasing Hebron for the Jewish people by burying her son Avraham here. And since then, Jews have been able to bury uh, in the ancient Jewish cemetery of Hebron. This, uh, this this flowing rendition I, I took I edited from the the Hebron website hebron.co.il.